Good evening, everyone. I hope you had a very pleasant weekend and were able to do things that you enjoy for a change and not just what others want you to do. At the same time, for the last three weeks now, we have been working on chakras. And um, have you been practicing it or trying to understand it? that this is how it works and this is how you can relate and associate with it. If yes, please give me a raised hand or a thumbs up so that I know that this exercise that we decided to carry out has been a bit of a helpful program for you. So anyone who has been practicing it or at least trying to understand what the chakras are trying to tell us, Okay, hmm. so let's see. Does such exercises really prove to be helpful? Because what does radical teach us? The basic principle of radical is auto healing, to help yourself so that you don't need the help of others ultimately. Right. So for that auto healing, you need to start practicing on your own. You need to start working on your own. And if we don't do that and just wait for programs and being told how to do it and knowing very well that we can go back to it, which is great. We have the recordings, all of them, right? But even for your own self, when you are making that effort to understand the chakra, you will be able to help yourself in any situation, at any time, anywhere. Even if you don't have the books, you have the Radical app, of course, but even otherwise, just the basics, understanding whether it's an illness, whether it is a thought or a physical reaction, emotional reaction, you'll know which chakra is acting up. And if nothing else, you can just R5 and work on those chakras, right? So as I explained to you, the chakra is like an atom's uh, image that you have. When you think of an atom, that image that it has is the dot with all the lines traveling all around it, right? That's how an atom is represented. So the chakra energy is exactly the same. We may have the same seven chakras, root, sacral, solar, heart, third eye, and crown. But the energy of it rotates in all directions. So everything somewhere is interlinked, maybe not in terms of great percentages because that belongs to the chakra itself. But yeah, if there is, let's say 5% of it in heart chakra or 2% of it in throat chakra or maybe 70% of it in sacral chakra if we are talking of the solar plexus. So it would be a good idea to start understanding why we are doing this exercise for you to understand the workings of the chakras, all right? So today we are going to be doing third eye. I forgot myself. We're going to be doing third eye chakra today. We have already covered till the throat chakra. So what is third eye chakra talk about? It is about Basically, if you look at it, it's about vision and implementation. The basic, isn't it? So if you have to imagine or visualize something, or if you have to project something for yourself, if you have to manifest anything for yourself, if you'd like something to be implemented, which you need to put your uh, affirmations in place, 
which is the chakra that is dominating in this scene? That is the third eye chakra. Oh, so, uh, yeah, third eye chakra. If the chakra is blocked, haven't we heard from a lot of people that no matter how hard I try, I'm just not able to focus. I'm just not able to concentrate. I'm just not able to manifest what I wish for myself. I get distracted. Or when I'm trying to meditate, there are lots of other thoughts that keep coming in and they distract me so much that I'm not able to complete my meditation. So what is happening here? Whether it is thought, feeling, or emotion, whichever are coming in at the third eye level, if there is a block, it's like a filter, no? So if you have a filter and that is already clogged, so anything that has to flow with it will either take a very long time or it will only flow through it in a distorted manner. Now visualize the, the sieve of a um, tea holder. So when you're pouring tea in your cup, all the residue gets left behind in that little sieve and only the clear water goes inside in your cup, right? And the tea is fresh because you have freshly brewed it and you have poured it and it has gone. Now visualize and think that the tea leaves that are there in that sea, you have not removed them, but you add more tea. Do you think the taste will be the same? No, the taste will be either it is too strong or it becomes a little sour or something else is happening. So the water that is filtering in is getting affected by what is left behind as a residue. So the same way, it may be for any chakra, of course, but here we're talking third eye because this is where your actual communication, your actual implementation, not only with earth realities, that means house, work, job, business, family, etc., is taken care of at the implementation and vision state. But this is the start of your connect to the spiritual world. So a lot of people say that I'm not able to see any master. I'm not able to see anybody. Why is that happening? Because perhaps you align the chakra from root till th uh, throat, but there's a blockage in your third eye. So how will it go forward? That is the gateway to open the gates for it to be implemented. <laughs> So what are some of the blockages that we need to understand metaphorically that are there in the third eye space that can limit our ability to connect to the masters, to the universe, to the vision that we have, to the implementation program that we have, or to manifesting anything, or just even releasing something to let go at that level, right? So let's just find out what all it can be. So it could be what, I mean, when the uh, chakra is blocked, what all does it lead to? So that you know that on the physical level, emotional level, mental level, psychological level, and uh, material level, et cetera, how you are getting impacted, correct? So what all does it lead to? It leads to headaches and migraines. It causes sleep disorders. It can cause visual problems too. It can also cause imbalanced hormone, a lot of mental confusion. So visualize people who have problems I mean, of mental health, etc., because they're mostly psychological problems. The other chakras may already be in a spin going in odd directions. 
but the, the third eye is blocked. So they're not able to visualize or see anything beyond what they are seeing, what they are feeling. And when they can't do that, they go into depression, they go into anxiety, and a lot of other illnesses also that we know about, right? Then you have anxiety and depression, as I just mentioned. Then you have lack of intuition. You have lack of focus and concentration. You have psychic and sensory overwhelming. So, and then there is an imbalance in your endocrine system. The glands are related to it. The pituitary glands are related to it. So there's an imbalance in those hormones can lead to a lot of situations, yeah? So let's go one by one. So headaches and migraines is very clear because the chakra is right here. And if this is blocked, so imagine this whole area and the connecting area would naturally get affected. So if you are prone to a lot of headaches and migraines, it would be a good idea to cleanse your visions, your dreams and ideas. So third eye chakra. So you will have to work on your third eye chakra because the imbalances might be connected directly. The imbalance of the chakra would be directly connected to your headaches or migraines, right? Then we talked about the sleep disorders. So because all the chakras that we have over here are related to thinking, right? To visualizing, to seeing them being fulfilled. Now, if all this is not happening in your space, and you're depressed, you're anxious, you're worried, you're frustrated. You may also be angry. You may be terrified. The children, when they have their exams, final exams, what happens to them? Don't they come up to you and say, mom, dad, I can't sleep. I'm just not able to sleep. Can you come with me, be with me? Why? They just want to feel reassured. How will they feel reassured? The security of the real world, that is the parents, will, that the, the parents can provide them, will make them feel reassured that everything is okay. Because the love that the parents will give them coming from the heart chakra by either holding them or caressing them or just literally massaging their forehead which relaxes them. And this is just one example I've taken of children. It could be with grown-ups, with anybody, right? So when you have sleep disorders, sometimes you've seen people get up in the middle of the night with a really worrying thought. Why does it happen? It happens because somewhere, some thought, feeling, emotion related to the third eye is fixed in your mind, which is not working for you. So you suddenly get up in the middle of the night or whatever time, and the first thought that comes is that worry, whatever you went to sleep with before going to bed. So you don't think that, why am I awake? You would just immediately open your uh, eyes to that problem or situation or trauma, or anything that has been highlighted in your personal space, right? Then we have, as we said, visual problems. So because it is third eye, you know it is connected to this area also. So we can say literally the whole of this area, right? Because eyes and vision can also, because we're talking in any case in the metaphoric sense of vision and implementation. Now, when your physical vision also starts getting affected, think about it. Isn't there stress? Isn't there a lot of concern? I'll give you an example of a person I know who at the age of 30 was diagnosed with retinopathy. You know what is retinopathy? Retinopathy is a disease 
where the retina of the eye starts getting impacted by the pressure and gradually the vision, apart from getting affected, starts reducing. That means a person who has retinopathy may know that after a few years, depending on the uh, progress of the disease, may turn blind, right? Now that is a very scary uh, proposition. This is just one example. But what did the person do? He has been following the R, just the basic R5 affirmations for his retinopathy. And of course, for all the chakra, taking all his medicines. So the retinopathy growth happened till he was about 35 and then it stopped. It has stopped there. Yes, if he has to read, if he has to look at objects, he has to bring it very close. But at least he's able to see, he's able to go for even cinema and outside locations and certain lights bother him, but he's perfectly fine. He's happy. And the best thing is, he's a bird photographer. Can you imagine a person who just listens to the sound of the bird and turns his camera there and keeps trying to focus because the lens is bringing the bird close to him. But first he has to keep searching for that bird. So he does that and that is absolutely commendable and his shots are absolutely clear. So when I asked him about it, so he told me very clearly, he said, whatever has to happen is okay whenever it happens. But why should I welcome it in my space? You taught me that it's all okay. It's okay to keep flowing in life. I'm flowing and the doctors are surprised that at 35 at that point, his disease has been halted. I'm not saying anything else. It's been halted. For the last 10 years, he's okay and working with his photography, right? So visual problems, is because of the vision and the blockages that can happen. And this also leads to your disturbances in the visual perception. That means when you want to visualize something, you may say, no, it's not going to work. You may veto it immediately. You may say, no, this is not meant for me. How can I do it? I can't even see. How will I do it? Or because your other chakras are blocked with the heaviness at the root, not enjoying life, power games at the sacral, no love in your life, not able to express, then how can you visualize a future for yourself? Think about it. It's the cycle of the chakras. So I have put it very crudely in very simple terms. Correct. So that can happen. Then you have imbalanced hormones. So some people believe that blocked third eye could be associated with hormonal imbalances also. So we know about the pituitary glands and if there's no release from the pituitary gland, that may be associated with the problems of the endocrine system. Your thyroids and other things may get affected. Right? So it could just be a third eye chakra problem, not a throat problem. Not a throat chakra problem, a third eye chakra problem. Then mental confusion. Mental confusion means difficulty in making decisions, scared of making decisions, or the lack of clarity in thought. So every time, or you may be overhyping things in your life. Because you're so scared to take decisions or implement things in your life, that lack of clarity. And where does that clarity come from? Again, start from the root, keep coming up, and you'll see at various places, you are not allowing that clarity to come in your space because at the root level, you may be feeling insecure about certain things. Suppose it's a, let's say it's a decision about parting ways with your partner for reasons which you have experienced over many, many years, or even the unfortunate part, part of losing a partner, right? But there needs to be a future plan. 
what are you going to do? How are you going to live your life? What is it that you want to implement for yourself? So many things come up in your space, but you're so insecure. You're so frail, you're afraid, root chakra. Joy of life has gone out or is gone out in case of some departed person. But for a, for a person making a, going through a divorce, separation, what happened? The joy has gone out at that time. And what are you doing? You're just throwing um, absolute daggers at each other. Right? So there's no joy in the existence. At the sacred level, it's a power game. But for the people who are unfortunately single uh, with lost partners, they feel absolutely cheated by life. They feel vulnerable. They feel they have been wronged. Right? Why did this happen to me? So they let their power go. And once their power goes, what happens? The other forces that are around you, energetic forces, whether they're your children, your family, your workplace, they start overpowering you and trying to fill you with thoughts which maybe you do not agree with, but don't have the courage to say no. Your heart is always in pain. You're hurting. Your throat cannot express. You're not able to talk. You're not able to communicate to anyone that, okay, good or bad, I'll take my own decisions. You don't have that courage, lack of courage. So all this happens because the third eye has caused all that mental confusion. Does this make sense But whatever I've said till now, people? Raise your hands or something so that I know. Madam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic, fantastic explanation. Okay, thank you. Excellent thank you. explanation. Yeah. So as I said, thank you, Munmun. Thank you very much. Um, as I said earlier, please make it a point that this chakra uh, series that we have done, please keep going through it thoroughly. It will help you solve a lot of your own situations in life. It will help you instantly come for solutions for people who, uh, may just reach out to you even with a sing simple thing like, what should I do? Everything just doesn't, you know, uh, sort of uh, expand just with the affirmations. Unless you have an understanding of what you're talking, the, you then get the correct affirmation also to express and tell the other person. It may not just be IR5, my throat chakra or heart chakra or whatever it is. There could be other things involved too. Which the other person may say, no, I, I don't think so. I don't feel it. And when you start, thank you, Sharon. Yes, knowledge is power. Very true. So when you explain it to them that this is what is happening, that understanding opens a lot of uh, sort of portals, you might say, of your mind, of your heart, and even your soul. Okay. Let's go to the next level that we are talking is uh, when you have blocked heart chakra, third eye chakra, it is anxiety and depression. So we've already talked about it in a way. So we understand that anxiety and depression and mood swings, right? All this can happen also when the third eye chakra is blocked. All right. I think I need to work on my third eye today. Why am I not able to say it every time? So that's what it is. So the third eye leads to the, when the, 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 let's say the fear or the anxiety or frustrations or depression become too overpowering, your physical body gets affected. The endorphins or the dopamine that are there that get formed in your body, they start dropping. So when they start dropping, you just think of things which are absolutely negative. There is no way that you will come out of it easily. Even if someone tells you, it's okay, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. So what if you've lost this job? There are so, so what if you've been through other kinds of traumas? 
what will you say as a person? How do you know? You don't know what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm going through. So for that, because we have to remember that the endorphins and dopamine levels have dropped such a level, sometimes they can also be suicidal. Sometimes they can also be, you know, master wreckers, wrecking their life. And in the process, what happens? The whole energy of the family gets absolutely uh, contorted. It gets affected. And you've had a lot of people going through horrible uh, experiences personally, breaking down of family uh, systems, uh, children getting affected by, let's say, if a parent is affected, and if the child is affected, the parents also go through so much, or any other family member, etc. that it is very essential, I would like to add over here, if anybody in your family, or you know someone who's going through mental health issues, please make it a point to help them with two things. Firstly, they should definitely get in touch with a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Because this is not something to, you know, sort of hide from. This is not something to be ashamed of. This is, it's a normal thing. It's only in India that we still have a taboo about it. But going to a psychiatrist where you'll get the medical help, the tablets, you know, which may help you to sleep, which may help your endorphin uh, levels, which will help your dopamine levels to start rising. And then work on the person with your radical power. But before that, if the person is really suicidal or he or she is going through a lot of problems, my sincere request is make it possible that they should be in touch with a psychiatrist or a psychologist also. Okay? So, and then gradually, once the person's levels start rising, the behavior changes. When the behavior changes, then you can very beautifully just let radical slip into their lives. Okay? If a person is too deeply in medical depression, it's a medical depression. Please do not interfere with any kind of healing. Let them heal first from, with the physical help of the doctors, then get into it. This is a piece of advice I'd like to give you. Right? Then we have lack of intuition as I talk. And what is that? Because this chakra is linked to intuition and to inner wisdom. So the people who are the wise ones, haven't you seen in photographs in olden times or somewhere in posters, you'd see a kind of light coming out from here like that. There are two places they show lights coming out. One is from here like this and one is from the hand. Okay. So why do they show this? Because this is inner uh, intuition and inner wisdom. So when you are awakened, when you are linked with the spiritual world, with your own higher consciousness, with your super consciousness, with your masters, the world changes completely. Your outlook changes completely. Your approach changes completely. And when you have that inner wisdom and intuition, you are able to have a lot of intuitive guidance. Haven't we seen in our own groups in Radical that some people are intuitively so blessed? I mean, what about Atman herself? All this that we are practicing here today is because of the intuitive guidance that she has received from the masters, right? So, but we all have our own universe. We all have our own masters. And we should all make that effort for our own sake to connect to our intuitive guidance. And that will happen, as I said, when your chakra is absolutely open. Right? Any questions till now? Anyone? Is it clear till now what I have said? We are still talking of third eye only. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, who's this? Yes, Sharon. Sharon. Yes. So my uh, sister-in-law, she's the <laughs> eldest in the family. She lost her son, who was about 33 or 34, to an immune disease. Okay, they battled it for a year. 
and uh, they couldn't get over it. It took them a very long time. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it. it they are still really, I mean, you know, what parents, every parent doesn't want to see their child dying. I mean, we always think to ourselves, it's better me than my child. And it's been like four or five months, and their child is a psychologist. Their daughter, who's a surviving member, a surviving girl, she's a psychologist, and uh, I don't think she's really helped them. Like, I listened to what you said just now, I never thought about it, that if they had got some psychiatric help, because at this at this point, uh, radical, et cetera, is, they, they need the psychiatric help and the psychological help. And I was trying to figure out, like, how they could not get that help because I'm after listening to you it was like yeah I think they I'm not very close to them so I really uh didn't people don't really know what I do apart from my my clients but my family basically have no clue what I do and like I keep it that way because if they don't ask I don't go around showing off what I do right. but listening to you, I was just thinking to myself their child is a certified psychologist. You know, the sister, they they lost their son. So their daughter is a certified psychologist. And I'm wondering why uh, they could not help. And I had gone to meet them this a few weeks ago. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm still, I haven't been able to recover. Yeah. I haven't been able to recover. And, you know, people are saying, oh, time will take, you know, by now you should be okay. Let bygones be gone. Be gone. It can't happen. I mean, it's, it's not possible. She's she's a mother at the end of the day. And I'm trying to figure out, like, what could have helped her? You just mentioned mm-hmm. psychology and psychiatrists. I was like, hell, I mean, I really wish that lady had listened to you. <laughs> you know, the daughter was there and listened to you. So uh, quite a- Sharon, yeah. Thank you for this. It's a very valid point that you have raised. Simple thing. First thing is, someone in the family should never try to heal you at all. Mm. It has to be an external person, number one. Number two, Mm. don't forget that they are all going through their levels of grief. So their Mm. energy, personal grief, their energy, their perception of their grief in terms of their relation to their son or brother would be Mm. at different levels. And that itself would uh, not make it easy for them to come out of it because their energies are totally scattered. They are totally integrated. So they need to first get integrated, right? And Mm. that can only happen if they have the love and support system of people around them. Because all Mm. need help. Even the girl needs help. And then Mm. there's an added trauma for the girl because of the loss of brother Probably she's being not ignored, but maybe not being sort of given that attention as a daughter. She may have her own set of problems, okay? Not problems, situation. So very clearly they do need psychiatric help, but it cannot be someone from the family. Healing. No, I was thinking, honestly, I was thinking not, obviously she can't help. It's natural. She's grieving and whatever. But I was wondering why she didn't, you know, like you have a support group. Like, supposing I have something, I'll say, like, why don't you go to Atman? Or why don't you go to you? Or why don't you go to somebody else? I was quite like, it was quite an eye opener. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. she could have sent them to a colleague or a boss or I that, don't know. That is your perception because you have mm-hmm. a different understanding of what you are learning. That's true. And I'm on the outside, they are on the inside. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. So when you're there, sometimes the shock is so much. That no matter you may be a psychiatrist or a doctor yourself, it just doesn't Mm. strike you. Because it's just the trauma that is, I mean, they are frozen in time. They are frozen in their grief. That is true. But if a suggestion can help them, that would be something great. That if they can get help, external help, it would be great. The sad part is... You know, the sad part is, Arati, they are like so feeling, they feel guilty about not coming out. How do you feel guilty yeah. about not I mean, they are suffering. They're heartbroken. I understand. Yeah. But the yeah. people around, I mean, I'm, I came to uh, Calcutta and I met them for the first time after this incident. And they are like feeling guilty. And I, how do you feel guilty about, why is the community telling you like, you know, it's okay, you should live your sad task. It's, it's so, diff- I felt so bad about it because, I mean, I know so much, but I cannot, until I have this thing until somebody doesn't ask me, I don't reach out, I don't help, they don't reach out to me. 
I felt really bad about it. That why do these people have are having to be made to feel guilty for not recovering five months since it? I mean, it's not possible. So you, if you, if you, if you feel for them that much, Sharon, you can do one thing, and that is, I admit the pain or the grief of whatever family. I admit mm-hmm. the grief uh, and pain of X family. under the loving care of radical consciousness you can do that, that you don't perfect. need permission for that and that is keep perfect. doing so it. keep doing it yeah and i admit whatever i admit the, the grief, grief and pain and pain of x family x y z what under the loving care of radical consciousness under the loving care of radical consciousness thank you so much yeah. that will be a, no, that will be a nice contribution yeah you can do that and do it continuously every day Twice a day, twenty-one okay, times. Okay, thank you, thank you, yeah? Yeah. thank you. So then, yeah. So then, just to complete it, lack of focus and concentration also is, as we talked about it, and memory retention can also be a problem. That is a uh, related to third eye, and because of all these chakra imbalances, look at everything that we have covered till now. So it just leads you to the same thing. Everything with memory, everything with. focus uh, depression anxiety intuition wisdom you name it it's all there so don't we want to work on it and make sure that our third eye chakra is going good right so let's make that effort and then as i had already talked about uh, the endocrine system you know how it can affect and make very physical changes to your body so uh Yeah. Till now, anybody else has any questions, or we can go to the next chakra. Anybody else? Let me tell you the affirmations for the uh, third eye chakra. The general affirmations that you can follow. This would be for the front third eye chakra. You should have I align my vision. with the universal vision because we are talking talking of vision and implementation all right i align my vision with the uh, universal vision i r5 my vision or i admit my wisdom and vision under the loving care of radical consciousness right next for the back uh third eye chakra it would be i implement all my dreams ideas and vision i implement all my dreams ideas and vision and i admit the implementation of my dreams ideas vision under the loving care of radical consciousness yeah Yes, Apurva, you have a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I wanted to know that uh, the back of my head, the scalp area, and back of my head, if that part is throbbing and hurting, that means the third eye chakra is blocked. You have to visualize. This is your third eye chakra here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, arrow through that right, part right. is your third back back third eye chakra. Okay. okay. So yeah. then, if it is that area, then yes, it is the back. back third eye so chakra can, yeah. Okay. yeah yeah okay. so you receive from the front all the chakras in the front is what you receive from the world and back is what you implement and give out to the world and to yourself okay okay so that's why when i say i implement my dreams ideas and visions this is for the back right all right okay then we come to the final chakra and that is the crown chakra the most beautiful chakra the lotus of our heads and once it is opened completely whether it is with kundalini awakening or just with radical you see the brilliance that emerges from it and makes you feel that you know you are euphoric you feel the euphoria and you live a very different life right you are always permanently smiling it's a beatific smile that you carry with you so what is it what happens if that chakra is blocked so because that is your direct connect as i said 
with the spiritual world, with the metaphysical world, with all the masters, with everything that is connected to the uh, to your um, higher self, your physical higher self to connect to your higher consciousness, super consciousness, etc. That is the direct connect, right? That is where you draw the energy when you are blessed by people. They place their hands over here. Why? Because the energy from the palm is going directly to your crown chakra. And these are ancient rituals that we have been seeing in our lives from childhood and for centuries. So they knew what they were talking about, right? So this is the direct blessing point, okay? And if you know when a child is born, doesn't the people and the family and the doctors tell you, don't touch this part? Because this chakra area is so tender, it's open. So it has to close. And it takes time. So that is why that area is very tender, very, very tender, right? So what is it that happens if the crown chakra is blocked? Firstly, simple. It's a disconnect from your spirituality, complete disconnect. Now, when you say disconnect, what happens is that when you're not connected to the divine, you lack a sense of purpose. There's no purpose. What's the point? What's the meaning? What, when your life gets affected, everything gets affected because you don't believe anything. You don't think anything is worth it. Life is not worth living. And everything comes down to nothing works. There's no point. What's the point of living? If somebody tells you, okay, connect to a master or a guru, you'll normally hear, ah, they can do nothing to me. They can't help me, right? Because everything has crashed in your world. So the two major chakras which really need to be taken care of are the root and the crown. Root, because it connects you to the earth reality, fight or flight, right? And in fight or flight, it's not just about the... It could be any kind of fight and flight. When you are under depression, anxiety, that is also a flight, right? When there is, a, a, you know, a sort of you are living in a Lara land, not connected to reality, that is also a flight. So that's also root chakra. So you see, right from here, we have gone down to root again. So root has to be strong. Crown has to be clear. It is very important, okay? Then you have intellectual overwhelmingness. That means overwhelming, uh, sorry, overemphasis on intellectual pursuits and neglecting spiritual exploration can create imbalances in the crown chakra. Can somebody explain to me what this means? Just pursuing everything on the earth reality, money, work, business, I mean, everything else, and just con concerned about everything that gives you the luxury and the power on earth. And caring two hoots about your connection. You know, um, there is a story about one person, two people landed at very rich. And he used to do a lot of donations and give everything, you know, a lot of money and donations to charity and other places. And there was another person who was a, a robber. So he used to steal money from people and then share that money with the poor in his village, or like a Robin Hood. He used to share that, whether it was money or whether it was food, etc. So when the... It's, When were opened, the robin and was sent to hell. So he was asked, you know, the gatekeeper, I was asked, why did you send him to hell? He's such a wonderful man. He's always been contributing to all the temples, to all charities, even though he's so rich and he's given good, uh, you know, uh, donations. So what did God say? God said, yeah, that was only because he didn't want anybody to cast a black eye on his money. He never did it out of charity. He was just safeguarding himself. But this man, even though he was a robber, he was doing it to help the poor, the needy, the ones who really needed it. So he needs to be in heaven, not that fellow. 
So when there's too much of intellectualization and thinking, well, spiritual world is nothing to, you know, ignore it completely. That also means that your crown chakra is not activated. Beliefs and thinking, wisdom, in your wisdom, if you think that, no, I'm an atheist and I'm good with it, that is different. But if you are doing it out of a challenge to yourself to prove to yourself and others, I can live without God. I'm not saying God, I mean, I can live without any connect to spirituality. I don't need a guru. I don't need anybody. Fine. Karma works on this earth only. Someday, sometime, it comes back at you. Okay? Then we talk about, again, same thing, attachment to the material world. When there's too much attachment to the material world, uh, it's obvious. The crown chakra is blocked because you're worried all the time about your material possess possessions, your status, or worldly concerns, you know, that how is my image, my reputation, etc., when there is no contribution towards the real uh, generosity of giving, whether it is knowledge, whether it is wisdom, whether it is money, any kind of generosity, when that is not there and you're only concerned about your material wealth, well, the crown chakra is definitely blocked, right? Then blocked belief systems. Holding on to rigid belief systems and dogmas without openness to higher truths can impact the health center of the crown chakra. Some people are driven, there are, there's another way also, but that is also blocking of uh, crown chakra. There are certain religious beliefs among certain religions that tell you you can only do this and nothing else. Yeah, I'm not going to take any names, but the beliefs are so strong that this is the only way to reach heaven. This is the only way things work. This is the only way you can get, well, nirvana. What is that? Those are beliefs and dogmas, right? And that is because it is the crown chakra I'm mentioning this. So what is happening? Basically, you are completely, you're com you, you know, sort of hypnotized by the fact that, okay, what my master or guru or whoever is telling me, teachers, that is the truth. And that is the ultimate truth. So your crown chakra perforce gets blocked. Maybe you don't know it, you don't want it, or you don't know it basically, but it gets blocked. So we have to be very careful about what we want to believe in. We have to use as third eye guides our intellect and wisdom to decide what is right and what is wrong for us. My right, maybe you're wrong, fine. But then I have to be convinced about it at the uh, metaphysical and spiritual level too, that yeah, this is right, this is okay. And we can agree to disagree. But strict dogmas and beliefs can create a big blockage in your crown chakra. Then one big thing that all of us carry, and I don't, I don't deny it, even maybe I carry it too, that's the fear of the unknown. That all of us carry, right? The fear of the unknown. So the crown chakra is associated with universal consciousness and the infinite, right? Fear of the unknown or fear of death can create lots of blockages. Now people get illnesses. The first thought that comes to them is death. Suppose it's a serious illness. So they start fearing for their lives. Are bhai, why? Why do you need to fear? When you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> Nobody has to worry about it. You don't feel the death there after you're gone. But jokes apart, <clears throat> the fear of death and fear of unknown doesn't make us live our life. People keep saving and scrounging and saving their money, not using it. It will come use later in life. You already manifested it. That it will come in use later in life. So you have to fall ill. You have to get some disease. And then you'll say, thank God I saved the money. But otherwise, even when you are in a situation where you have the fear of them, what will happen? How will I manage? What is going to be the outcome? Who is going to take care of me? Or any of the other possibilities of uh, fear. You 
to decide what it says. Then people who are too much into spirituality without grounding, who are always floating and flying in the air, that is also not correct. You need to have a perfect balance, the spiritual world and the real world. So it can lead to a lot of imbalances and that itself is because the crown chakras are blocked. And then of course, as I've already said, lack of connection to higher self. So if it is blocked, you cannot connect to your higher self. It's clear now. So you can't have intuition. You, you have a disconnect from the higher self. And what happens because of that is it hinders full expression of what you would wish to convey because the crown chakra is blocked. It may make you a little bigoted. It may make you a little uh, sort of uh, thinking that my way is the right way, etc. Right. It may not lead you to be open to listen to other people's points of view because I am spiritually aligned. I am spiritually connected. What I'm saying is the only way. But when you are really spiritually aligned, you have people come to listen to you. They want to hear from you. It may be very simple things. It may be two plus two is four. But they want to hear it from you because you are the, you know, uh, the enlightened one. Okay? And that is fantastic. But if you don't have it, your connection to your higher self is not there. And also, there's another danger. If it is a blocked chakra, there is possibility there would be excessive ego identification. I'm God. I'm the powerful one. People come to me. I'm the only one who can give them solutions. Such people have thankfully started landing in jail in India now. I don't know about other countries. But it's happening in other religions too that people have been jailed for what they have done in life, right? But that's because the ego is there and humans by nature are so afraid to go against anybody who's spiritually enlightened, right? So they follow you blindly. So you think that you are the master of all you survey, which you are not. So ego is a very big thing. The humblest people who are spiritually aligned will not have any ego. Right? Look at all the Martha Babaji. Look at Larry Mahashe. Look at Sai Baba, the people whom radical is associated with. Simple life, simple people. Right? Then you have lack of mindfulness and presence. That means you are totally overoccupied uh, with either the past or the future. So you are never here. You are never present in the now. So when you're not present in the now, that means your crown chakra is playing tricks on you. So but when you don't live in the present, this is what happens. And it can affect the health very badly of the crown chakra. Okay. So learn to live in the now again by aligning all the chakras, especially starting from root till solar. And only then your heart will open up. And because if your crown chakra is blocked, as I said already, energy cannot enter from here. So the lower chakras in any case will get into an imbalance. And that is because we are not allowing the energy flow to flow through us as a complete cycle. Right? So that is how chakras function. Any questions you have for crown chakra or any chakra for that matter? Anyone? I hope it has helped you understand a little more about how to deal with chakras in the future. Right. So now let me give you the affirmations for the crown chakra. This would be what would it be? Ah, I recognize the oneness. I recognize the oneness. I R5 my being, just being. I R5 my being. I am the experience, and the experience is me. I am the experience. 
experience and the experience is me. And I admit the experience of oneness under the loving care of radical consciousness. I admit the experience of oneness under the loving care of radical consciousness. So that brings us to the end of our chakra learning, the seven major chakras. Just remember, apart from what we learn in radical for the advanced chakras, if you have your chakra activated and aligned, believe me, a lot of problems get sorted out, a lot of situations get sorted out, a lot of you get sorted out, and a lot of people around you get sorted out. Right? So if there are more questions, otherwise we can call it a day. Thank you very much for being here, for listening patiently. And it's been wonderful trying to explain because I've enjoyed myself very much too. Thank you. And so thank you. All the best. Have a good evening. Please do write your comments on the Circle of Peaceful Progress page. And do suggest what else do you want us to talk about. Because the other days are normally meditation. This is the talk day, right? So do let me know what is it that you would like to hear, you know, talk about. We'll do that. We'll bring it up in future programs. So all the best. Good night. <laughs>